Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Genetics Junkie. Today's video is going to be about gene order and this time it's going to be involving double crossovers. It's very similar to the other question that I did. Um, if you haven't, if you don't know anything about gene order, then watch my first video on gene order without double crossovers um, before attempting this. It'll really give some clarity and I'll also be fast tracking through this question. Um, this question is from our TAT5 and it's question two. It's a really nice question um, to kind of learn how to do gene order with double crossovers and it also has some stuff to do with um, the coefficient of coincidence so that's going to be kind of cool to run through. So yeah get that in front of you, give it a read and pause the video and get yourself acquainted. Um, I'm going to be going through it quite quickly because it is so similar to the other question that we did. And now I'm just going to stay weirdly quiet for a bit while you read it. Alright, so hopefully you've gone through it and you've acquainted yourself. Uh, the few, first couple things that I kind of want to point out to you is that I've written down all my traits. I don't know if you noticed, but there is three traits um, in this question. It's pod color, seed color, and what I called creepiness, because I have no idea what else to call it. And I've also given them each symbol. So obviously my pluses, as usual, are my wild type alleles and my lowercase um, letters are my recessive mutant alleles. <clears throat> Sorry. I've also written out my F2 progeny. Remember you always have to do that first um, and the reason why I've chosen to do it in Y, B, C order is when they give you the F2 progeny they start out with one of your no crossovers being Y, B, C. And that's why I chose to, to keep that order, just as my starting point. Remember, I always choose a reference order and then I run with it through the question. Um, yeah, and just remember you have to write down, uh, in your F2, you have to write down all your different classes um, and put them in descending order, like I've done here. So obviously no crossovers, your parental types and your single crossovers are, and double crossovers are your recombinant types. And also I've put my total here. Remember, we are going to be using it um, for our calculation, so just put that out there. Uh, I've also written out my parent um, chromosomes and also my F1. Uh, remember, I did do a video on how to do your parent chromosomes and your F1 chromosomes. Um, that's like in, the, I think, my two videos ago or whatever. So yeah, I'll give that a watch if you don't know how to do it. All right, so I've also done my whole gene order map. Um, I have already done the single crossover 1 and single crossover 2 as you can see here and I found out that okay it's I see both plus YB in single crossover 2 and I see um, plus YC in single crossover 1 so I already know that this is actually going to be my gene order but I'm just going to actually show you how to do the double, double crossover part of this question. So it's really simple. All you have to do, I've already kind of done lines here that kind of forms a double crossover. Mm -hmm. So you'd all, just for argument's sake, I'm just going to check, um, I'm going to check that I do find uh, my progeny in the double crossover group. So all I do is I take, okay, can I find a plus, a Y and a plus? And I actually do see that in my double crossover progeny. And I have to do it the other way around. Mm -hmm. Let me use a different color. Can I see a C plus B in my crossover, in my double crossover? And yes, I can. It's over there. So I know for a fact that this is going to be my order. So I already can see that my order is C, Y, and B. So that's really easy. If you guys don't really understand what I'm doing, please go look at my previous video on um, single crossovers and double crossover. Well, sorry, not double crossovers, just the single crossover one. Um, yeah, so I found out that my gene order is C, Y, and B. And uh, just give me a second, sorry. And now I'm going to head to my calculations about how to calculate the, the, the gene distances between Y and B and C and Y. And how I know... Um, okay, wait, let me, let me think about this quickly. Okay, so for my first thing is, because we are doing double crossovers, we have to take that into account in calculating our distances between the genes. Because in the previous video, only single crossovers occurred and I didn't have to take any double crossovers into account because they they did not exist. So anyways, 
Um, I found out while I was doing my gene map that my single crossover occurred between Y and B because my orange line here actually takes place between Y and B to give me the corresponding um, uh, individual or individuals in my F2. So that's why I'm using my single crossover total um, in this equation. So that's actually my total in my single crossover is 563. But I also have to add in my total for my double crossovers, and that happens to be 26. So I've put that over the total, because that's my total progeny in, in F2, and I'm timesing it by 100 because I need it to be in percent. Because remember, centimorgan and percentage is interchangeable. And you get 11,79%, which is also equal, oops, sorry, it did look a really weird wiggly line which is also equal to 11,79 centimorgans. Okay, cool. So we got the first distance, and that happens to be between Y and B. Then I still have to do my distance between C and Y. And my total for single crossover 2 is 308. But I still have to take my double crossovers into account, which is 26. And you pretty much do the same thing, and you get... 6,68%, which is the same as 6,68 centimorgans. So that's great. I've done my gene map. I've worked out my distances. The only thing that's changed due to the double crossovers is I have to take it into account in my calculation that although single crossovers are occurring, you also have double crossovers occurring at the same time. So that's why we add them in. All right, so that's cool. Um, I'm just going to flip this over because in B, they ask you to calculate the coefficient of coincidence and the, what else do they ask? And the interference. So I'm just going to put this to the side and bring this up. So before we start, the coefficient of coincidence is actually the percentage of um, double crossovers that you don't see. Uh, and that's in a percentage, so it's really important to remember that we have to keep everything in percentages here, and um, the interference is in percentage as well. So just remember that. Okay, so this is my equation that I'm going to use to be able to calculate my coefficient of um, a coincidence. I'm just going to call it C because I'm getting tired saying that whole whole word or whole sentence. Um, and it's your double crossovers expected over your double crossovers observed. And the way we get our double crossovers expected is it's this equation here. So it's actually the distance between y and b times the distance between c and y. I just write it like this because it's way quicker. So that's we're taking that from our previous question, or our, pre, or our part a of the question, and we know that the distance between y and b was 11,79%, and we know that the distance between c and y is 6,68 percent. So when you put that in your calculator, don't forget to actually put the percentage signs in there, or, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just make sure that these these two um, amounts are in percentages, because we're going to put it. Because if you don't, then you're going to mess up your whole your whole equation. Um, okay, so now when we have that, then we get like this kind of weird number of zero comma. 00787. Okay, cool. So we have that's our double crossovers expected. But remember, guys, we have to put it in percentage. So we've got to times it by 100 to get it into percentage. And that happens to be 0,787%. It is really, really, really important to make sure it's in percentages. If one thing's in percent, with the other thing in percentage. It's just, that's just how it works. If you don't do it, you're not going to get the right answer. Okay, cool. So we got our double crossover expected, which is this number. Now we have to work out our double crossover observed. And that's actually very easy because they actually give you um, your double crossovers that you, you observe in your F2. So you happen to observe how many? You observe 26 double crossovers in your F2 and you put it over 
your total progeny of your F2, which happens to be 4,997. And you times it by 100, because remember, we need it in that damn percentage. Okay, and then we get 0.52%. So that's great that we have, like, everything's in percentage, because remember when we do this um, equation, whatever unit you use at the top has to be the same unit that you use at the bottom and that's why we make everything in percentage and at the end of the day your c is going to be a percentage as well um the reason why i actually like am stressing the percentage is that a lot of people forget during tests and when you're in a test situation you actually get very confused and you're like okay well what needs to be in percentage what am i working with all the time so just remember everything's in percentage make sure it's in yeah that's just how you do it all right so i am going to take my double cross over expected, put it on the top here, and then I'm going to take my double cross over observed and putting it on the bottom. And then we get 1,51%. So that is the number of double crossover or the percentage of double crossovers that you don't observe in your F, uh, F2 offspring. And that could be due to like um, chiasma interference, like the distances that the genes are away from each other. It could be like a number of reasons why you don't observe it. Um, okay, and now we're going to do our interference. So interference is actually very easy. It's just one minus your, um, your coefficient of coincidence. So I'm just going to do that here. I've given you the equation and I just write my number in. And then that is equal to negative 0, 0,51. Um, and I think that's actually in percentage as well. So that's actually negative interference, and um, I can't remember why it's negative, but yeah, that is negative because it has a negative in front of it. So yeah, that is how you do all of that. Um, I hope that was a very explanatory video, and my next video is actually going to be on a couple of test questions, so look out for those, and um, happy studying, guys.